12 lap sprint race in the Loster lightweight class, where bikes 12 years and older will come. Watch as professional racers go head to head with amateur riders in this epic event. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. The Yamaha YZFR6 was designed to outperform the majority of motorcycles it competes with on the track, leading me to victory in the vintage class. However, things didn't go as planned in this race. Despite facing some major issues mid-season, I finished 7th out of 24 riders. It wasn't the result I wanted, but it's all part of the learning experience. In this video, I'll share why racers believe having a B-bike an identical secondary motorcycle is crucial. Stay tuned to find out more about the intense world of racing with heavily tweaked machines and skilled riders. the necessary performance upgrades, like a quick shifter and aftermarket Olin suspension, which put it at a disadvantage compared to the highly competitive bikes in the race. Most professional riders have both an A bike and a B bike, so they can switch to the other one if one breaks down without wasting any time. In the previous rounds leading up to this race, I encountered a couple of problems with my Yamaha R6. During the race, the clutch came loose because the nut for the slipper clutch was not properly secured with thread locked tight. The vibrations caused it to come loose. However, I was able to fix this issue by retorquing it to the right specifications and using thread locker this time. It's worth mentioning that the OEM Yamaha R6 clutch comes with a clutch hub nut lock tab to prevent it from loosening. Unfortunately, since I have an upgraded Yoyodyne clutch installed on my bike, which I absolutely love, it doesn't come with a nut lock tab. Therefore, the only correct way to install it is by using thread locker after torquing it to the specified level. After successfully resolving the clutch problem on my bike, I unfortunately encountered a new issue, a coolant leak that was causing me a lot of frustration in between races. Despite this setback, my main goal now was to secure the vintage championship for this year. Additionally, I was determined to finish as strongly as possible in the Lost Era lightweight class race for the 2023 season. My focus shifted towards learning as much as I could to improve my performance and overcome any challenges that came my way. After extensive searching and consulting with a fellow racer who is also a motorcycle technician, we discovered that the three black rubber radiator hoses were not installed in the proper sequence. This misplacement resulted in a leak occurring every time I came to a stop while riding the bike. Most of the time, it's the minor issues with the bike that can escalate into major problems if not addressed promptly. I've come to realize that in order to secure a championship title in any category, it's crucial to have a backup bike ready in case something goes wrong with the primary one. Having a designated B-Rain bike with the appropriate setup and rain tires can be a game changer, especially when the weather conditions suddenly change. 
To tackle this challenge, numerous racers opt to carry an extra set of rims with their second best tire choice already mounted, ensuring they are well prepared for any unforeseen circumstances on the track. lacks a gear indicator, which I believe is quite handy during races. It allows you to easily see which gear you're in, especially when things go wrong. I highly recommend considering getting a gear indicator and fine-tuning the bike for better performance. Although I haven't put this R6 on the dyno, it has been mapped once through software. Yamaha YZF R6, whether it's for the tracks or streets, is known for its impressive factory setup. While every motorcycle may require some basic upgrades before hitting the track, the same goes for street riding. Many riders often opt to replace a few parts right from the factory such as the bulky and unattractive exhaust found on modern sport bikes. Wyatt Chang, number 21, goes into one. Here comes Al Capito, now under pressure from Reed Lewis. That is a race amongst its own, as Freitas, Arugio, and Farouk Khan. And let's see where Reed Lewis is going to set up. Andrew Al Capito on that number 85 as they go towards the track ship straight. Lewis in that red air vest there up on the back of the bike of Andrew Al Capito, number 85. Professional riders are frequently associated with black numbered race motorcycles, showcasing their expertise and skill on the track. Witness a seasoned rider on a Triumph motorcycle as we engage in a thrilling head-to-head -head battle, pushing the limits as we accelerate down the back straight with full throttle. In this intense moment, even a slight increase in horsepower could make a significant difference in the outcome of the race. It's clear to me that I'll be needing a B-Bike soon. Yamaha's recent announcement to discontinue the YZF-R1 in 2025 has sent shockwaves through the motorcycle community, especially among fans of leader-class superbikes. The move comes as a response to the changing dynamics of the market, with a growing demand for more budget-friendly options in the sports bike segment. Yamaha's decision to focus on mid-capacity bikes signals a shift in their strategy towards catering to a wider range of riders, rather than solely focusing on high-end leader-class machines. As Hothaza, your race leader, goes into one. has made up some ground. Not sure if there's going to be enough ground to catch Othaza, but he's definitely made up some ground in overall distance between first and second place. As Lewis finally has gotten around Al Capito. Baruch Khan and Jim Freitas having a great battle here back and forth. Now it looks like Khan's in front of Freitas. Let's see if Freitas can get back around here on the runway or the dragway straightaway. Uncork those three cylinders of that Triumph. As he gets up beside Baruch Khan and Jim Freitas makes the pass. Now can he hold on? 
Yamaha Motor Group has decided not to develop an EU5 Plus version of the R1 or R1M. Starting from 2025, the R1 in Europe will be tailored for track use due to Euro 5 Plus homologation challenges, similar to what was done with the R6 in the past. There is a possibility that Yamaha may still offer the superbikes in markets with less strict emission standards. The R1 and R1M were last updated in 2020 to comply with Euro 5 regulations. So the future of Yamaha's iconic models remains uncertain. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more updates.